Welcome back to this week's Maverick's Kitchen, where we are making a delicious treat from the recently released Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Crystal Ball, show me what it is we're making. I see a delicious chocolate cake, but with a twist. It's in the shape of an absolutely enormous cherry. That's right, we are making Cupid's Grenade, one of the many collectible giant fruits in Pikmin. Pikmin 3 is the latest game in a delightful series focused on the cute little inhabitants of planet PNF 404. But what you'll quickly come to realize is that it's actually our own world where humans are long gone and tiny creatures collect our thrown away junk as coveted treasures. They come up with their own names for each treasure, hence the comical name of Cupid's Grenade given to a cherry that is larger than they are. Now, cherries will only grow so big, so instead of going out to the garden, we're headed into the kitchen to make a cherry out of chocolate cake. First up, we've got a myriad of dry ingredients that will all be sifted together to keep our cake light and delicate. Starting with 250 grams or 2 cups of all-purpose flour, then 400 grams or 2 cups of granulated sugar, a half cup of cocoa powder, a quarter cup of espresso powder, 2 teaspoons of baking powder, 1 and a half teaspoons of baking soda, and finally 1 teaspoon of salt. Make sure to sift everything nicely and whisk together for an even distribution. Once that's ready, we can contend with our wet ingredients. Into the bowl of a stand mixer, we're adding one cup of milk, two large room temperature eggs, a half cup of vegetable oil, and two, oops, very generous two teaspoons of vanilla. Beat those together with the paddle attachment until completely homogenous. Then we're going to add in our dry ingredients a little bit at a time, making sure that at least a bit goes onto the table each and every time. Then mix on low until smooth before adding one cup of boiling water. This is going to make our batter very runny, but that's exactly what we want. Make sure to continuously scrape down the sides and bottom of the bowl so that there are absolutely no dry clumps remaining. Now let's start prepping our cake pans. These pans are pretty low quality and I'm a bit worried as to how well the cake is going to come out of them. So I'm going to be using a generous amount of cooking spray followed by a heavy sprinkling of flour. Tap the flour around to get an even coating. Then we're pouring in the cake batter, filling up the molds about three quarters of the way and popping these into an oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. Bake for 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the absolute center comes out completely clean. Then let sit for 10 minutes before removing to a wire rack to cool completely. While our cakes are cooling, it's time to start on our icing. A classic buttercream icing starts with two full sticks of unsalted room temperature butter, alongside half a teaspoon of salt, and whip with the paddle attachment until light and creamy. For this next part, listen to the amounts I say, and not the amounts that I used. I used way too much cocoa powder, which turned my first batch of icing gritty and dry. First in is one pound minus half a cup of powdered sugar, or about 400 grams total. Follow that with half a cup of cocoa powder and two tablespoons of espresso powder. Once completely mixed in, add one to two tablespoons of vanilla until you have your desired consistency. Up next is a particularly challenging bit where we're going to start carving our cake into the general shape of a cherry. First, I'm taking off the tops of each half with a sharp knife. If any little pieces fall off here, it's not a big deal. This cake is very soft, but we will be removing the majority of the outside and any holes can always be patched with additional buttercream icing. I'm then cutting off the bottom of one half sphere to give the cake a flat surface to stand on. I'm adding a dollop of icing onto the cake board to secure our cake in place before applying a thick layer of icing over our lower half and gently lowering on the top half. Now it's time to start carving. There's very little advice I can give you here except to be gentle with the soft cake. And if you're having an issue with the cake sagging, you can freeze it for half an hour before cutting away too much. Besides that, just keep going and don't get discouraged when it doesn't look perfect because there is so much more work we can do with the icing. For our first layer of icing, I'm mixing quite a bit of water into the icing to get a thin, almost runny consistency. We're going to completely coat the cake with our crumb icing, and this is where you can start smoothing out any jagged edges and fill in any holes with additional icing. 
This is already looking way better, but we're going to pop it in the fridge for a half an hour to allow the crumb icing to harden up. Once chilled, we can start on our real buttercream frosting. Spread on a generous layer of chocolate frosting all over the cake and smooth everything to the best of your ability. This layer needs to be quite smooth for our final glaze to look good. But don't worry if there's any slight edges left behind because we're going to chill the cake for another half an hour, after which we can use a wetted finger to get a completely smooth surface. And that looks beautiful! So we're putting this back in the fridge one last time while we're preparing the final glaze. To start off, we're adding two tablespoons or two envelopes of unflavored gelatin to a quarter cup of cool water. Mix together with a spoon and set aside to bloom for a few minutes. Then in a medium saucepan, we're heating one cup of water, one and a half cups or 300 grams of granulated sugar, and two thirds of a cup of condensed milk. Heat until all of the sugar is completely dissolved before turning off the heat and adding in the gelatin mixture, stirring until no clumps remain. Then off the burner, we're adding two cups of white chocolate chips, minus a chip or two. Continuously stir the mixture until all of the chocolate is completely melted. Then pour the entire mixture through a fine mesh sieve to remove any errant clumps of gelatin that will mar the glossy finish of this glaze. Now we can start coloring our glaze. I'm going for a deep cherry red, so I'm starting with a few drops each of dark red and sunset red. Now this actually turned my glaze quite pink, so I'm also adding in a few drops of purple to deepen the color. Once the glaze has come to the perfect color, wait for it to cool all the way to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. While waiting, we can set our cake up either on a cooling rack or simply on an upturned glass on top of a rimmed baking sheet. Then gently pour the glaze over the cake. Wait a few minutes between layers and pour at least three to four times, making sure to use enough mixture to completely coat the cake. Now, if everything has gone according to plan, you will have a deep purplish red glazed cherry. Let it sit in the fridge overnight for the glaze to completely set. Top your cherry with a long stem and admire that cake in front of you because it was a truly difficult bake. I'm not cutting in right away because this is going to be the centerpiece of tonight's dinner, but I'll eat a few juicy, human-sized cherries instead. I can tell you that the cake ended up soft and moist with a perfectly creamy icing and a glaze that absolutely sparkled. This was a super fun project, and I'm so excited with how my giant cherry turned out. If you'd like to see more angles of the finished cake, check out my Instagram in the link below. Or if you want to see more games like Pikmin, you can come by my Twitch channel, also linked below, where I play games for upcoming recipes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. This recipe was a blast. Let me know if you tried it out yourself, and I hope to see you again next week.